Welcome, and thank you for participating today. My name is Stacey Fredenberg, and I'm a Communications Manager from Great Plains Quint. Before we begin, there are a few housekeeping items to review. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be posted within five to seven business days on our website at www.greatplainsqin.org. All lines will be muted throughout the presentation. There will be a question and answer session partway through this event. Questions may be posted in the chat box throughout the presentation to be addressed during the question and answer session or at the conclusion of the presentation. The chat box is located on the bottom right side of the screen. Participants may also press star five during the question and answer session to notify the moderator and be added to the question queue. Participants in the question queue will be prompted by the moderator and hear an announcement of line unmuted when it's their turn to ask a question. Welcome to the big picture of diabetes self-management education. This webinar is presented by the Great Plains Quality Innovation Network, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, Quality Innovation Network, Quality Improvement Organization for Kansas, Nebraska, North Dakota, and South Dakota. Our mission is to achieve the aims of better health care, improved health, safer care, and lower health care costs. Healthcare providers can recommend the best diabetes education options for each individual when they are aware of the availability and purpose for each program. A panel of diabetes healthcare professionals will provide their perspective on the benefits and value of collaboration among state and national diabetes self-management education programs. With that, I'd like to introduce today's speakers. Denise Colba has been a champion in the area of population health improvement within the state of South Dakota, leading and participating in many population-focused quality improvement initiatives. As program manager and regional task lead for Every Diabetic Counts, Denise works with stakeholders to improve clinical outcomes for Medicare consumers diagnosed with diabetes or prediabetes. Her role includes collaborating with providers, health systems, health agencies, and various chronic disease coalitions to promote monitoring of key clinical indicators and to encourage participation in self-management education. Denise has been trained as a master trainer with Stanford's Chronic Disease and Diabetes Self-Management Program and is promoting and facilitating Better Choices, Better Health workshops in South Dakota. She received her bachelor's and master's degree in nursing from South Dakota State University, and her clinical background is in child and family nursing. Melissa Cole is the Diabetes Clinical Outreach Coordinator with the South Dakota Department of Health. She's committed to the Department of Health's mission to work collaboratively to improve the quality of life for all South Dakotans at risk for or affected by diabetes. She, earns, she earned a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from South Dakota State University. She's a member of the Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society of Nursing. She has 11 years of experience in nursing with six years of experience in community and public health nursing. Colleen Swanson is the Diabetes Education Program Coordinator at the Avira Medical Group Clinic in Pierce, South Dakota. She developed her first diabetes self-management education program in an outpatient clinic setting in 2014 and established the Avira Medical Group DSME site American Diabetes Association recognition in 2016. The current program includes a diabetes and pregnancy program along with an established prediabetes and diabetes type 2 curriculum. She enjoys collaborating with other DSME sites, Better Choices, Better Health, and South Dakota Diabetes Coalition to improve diabetes care in South Dakota. In addition to championing DSME, Clean started a diabetes support group for the peer area in 2017. She received her bachelor's in nursing in 2008 at Winona State University in Minnesota and became a certified diabetes educator in 2016. Thank you all for sharing your knowledge and expertise with us today. Denise, please begin the presentation. All right. Thank you so much, Stacey. I'm going to just start out and give a quick overview of the Great Plains Quality Innovation Network for those of you who, are may, who may not be familiar with it. So the Great Place Quality Innovation Network was really formed with the following four entities, and each of these entities were 
individual quality improvement organizations in the previous scopes of work that CMS um, has given to us. So we serve as subcontractors now in the Great Plains Quality Innovation Network. And that includes the Kansas Foundation for Medical Care, Simro of Nebraska, um, Quality Health Associates of North Dakota, and then the South Dakota Foundation for Medical Care. And if you look on this map, you can see um, the, the geography of our twin. And we chose to work together as four states because we have a lot of commonalities in um, our Medicare consumers. Um, our provider can characteristics are very similar across our four states, and we face a lot of the same rural and frontier issues when it comes to medical and health care um, across the region. We also found that we have very similar corporate philosophies and general approaches to our work that we've done previously as QIOs, independent QIOs, so this really was um, some great opportunities for us to work on our strengths and combine some of our strengths to work very cohesively in what we do. The triple aim approach to clinical quality, and Stacey mentioned this already, but we really look at better health, better care, and lower, lower costs. And our network principles really um, uh, help us to enable, work it, or working like this really helps us to enable innovation and look at some innovative practices, um, foster some learning organizations. We really look at eliminating disparities across our region um, in, our, in seeing how healthcare is delivered. And we also work to strengthen the infrastructure and data systems um, with the healthcare sites that we work with and the partners that we work with. So some of the activities that we, we engage in to achieve these goals are that we really champion local level results oriented change. So we really focus on data um, and engaging uh, patients and partners in um, looking at this data and understanding how we can be more proactive and we can be innovative and spread the best practices across the region. We also teach and advise as technical experts, so we provide technical assistance in the forms of consultation and education um, to practices that we work with and sites that we work with and other partners, as well as manage that knowledge so that we don't lose any of that learning that has occurred. We also um, focus on our communication strategies so that we have um, promote optimal learning, and that we see some sustainability when we do see behavior change um, across our region, and then facilitate the learning and action networks that you are all a part of today. Um, this is one of the LAMs that we call them, and we create this all teach, all learn environment, and um, we really look at, um, through this methodology, that placing improvements really at the bedside level or really at the level of the Medicare beneficiary. The program that I am um, a part of is Everyone with Diabetes Counts, EDC. We know that nearly one-third of persons 65 years and older have diabetes, so it's a really important project for us. And that we also know that American Indian and Alaska Native adults are two and a half times, or close to two and a half times as likely as white adults to be diagnosed with diabetes. And that's a, that's a population in our states that we do work really closely with. We want to expand the reach of diabetes education programs through the participation of um, more healthcare practitioners. So we're always looking to engage health care healthcare practitioners with our work, and we aim to improve the quality of life for all persons with diabetes education by helping to expand those opportunities for beneficiaries to become engaged in and find diabetes self-management education, as well as other um, uh, all other populations across all four states. Um, we do help to assist physician practices in improving clinical outcomes and particularly looking at those related to diabetes, such as the hemoglobin A1Cs, the lipids, blood pressure, and weight control. And then um, really one of the focuses and part of what, what this LAN is um, helping us to promote is to increase the number of Medicare beneficiaries that participate in diabetes self-management education, and that is not only those that are delivered in the um, accredited and recognized sites, but also really promoting the classes that are utilizing the Stanford Chronic Disease um, Self-Management Program and the Diabetes Self-Management Program, as well as the DEEP model, which is a similar model, and Melissa will get into that a little bit, um, a little bit deeper with her presentation, um, but it is similar to the Stanford model um, that we see here in South Dakota. 
And then we work with stakeholders across the state, so Department of Health and Human Services um, and other organizations, academic institutions, um, all of those partners that help to increase the number of diabetes educators in the state and also community health workers that help promote our work in communities. So for today, our discussion is going to be around the self-management programs that I talked about, that the, that the program Every Diabetes Counts, the EDC program, has approved for promoting in our space across our region. So I spoke about the Stanford model, and that is used, that model is used in South Dakota and Kansas. In South Dakota, we call it Better Choices, Better Health, which is for any chronic disease, or Better Choices, Better Health with Diabetes, um, which is focused more towards participants with diabetes. And Kansas is called um, Kansas Self-Management Education, um, but they also have the chronic disease and the diabetes uh, modules that are implemented in that state as well. In North Dakota and Nebraska, they use the DEEP model, which is a diabetes empowerment education program, very similar to the Stanford model. And again, Melissa will talk a little bit about that, but they um, are really self-management education um, programs um, that are delivered more at a community level and are really promoted across the state without our, with our work that we do. Um, we're also going to talk about the diabetes self-management education slash training which is um, guided by national standards, and there's various curriculums there. These are the ones most likely delivered by a nurse, a certified diabetes educator, a pharmacist, um, somebody who has been trained specifically to be a diabetes educator. And then we're going to move on to opportunities that we can work together and produce some synergy between us, and then just some next steps with contacts and resources. So to start off, we'd like to do an audience poll. So if we could bring up the poll, I'd like you to answer a few questions for us that will help to guide some of our discussion. All right, so the, we've got two questions up here. Um, the first one is, does the Stanford model diabetes self-management, so that's better choices, better health in, in uh, the South Dakota or Kansas self-management education, or DEEP, which is what is the, the model that's used in North Dakota and Nebraska. So do these programs, these education models, do they replace diabetes self-management education, meaning the education that is given according to the standards in those recognized and accredited facilities? And the second question is similar. It's about um, are you hesitant to offer these programs which is Better Choices, Better Health, Campus Self-Management Education, or DEEP, because you're concerned that it may be competition for the diabetes self-management education that's delivered at those accredited or recognized sites. And we have a little bit of time here, um, about 28 more seconds yet to answer these questions. And if you're not quite sure, that's, that's good, too, because we know that there is a lot of confusion out there um, regarding the programs and really how they may fit together and how they may complement each other. So that's the purpose of our webinar, so we're hoping just to find out um, how, how this how you, as the audience, see these two programs. Emily, will the result? Oh, there they are. All right. Okay. So I see some of you didn't answer because then that's probably okay, because maybe you don't understand the question, and hopefully we'll clear some of that up. Um, but yes, I like to see a lot of the, the falses up there, too, because we really, um, as we move on with the discussion, we really want to help you understand that they're not competitive programs, but they can work, um, work collaboratively. And it's good to see nobody's hesitant in offering and promoting those other um, more community-based models. So with that, I will turn it over to Melissa. 
and she will talk about the different programs. We're just going to get her to be able to do her slides. And when you're ready, Melissa, you can go ahead. Thanks, Denise. Before I get started, I just want to make sure that you can hear me. Can you hear me okay? Yep, yes. we can hear you fine. All right. All right, so um, yeah, my name is Melissa Cool. I'm the Diabetes Clinical Outreach Coordinator with the South Dakota Department of Health. And part of the presentation that I'm going to be sharing with you today is just to kind of give some more details about the different options that are available for diabetes self-management education that Denise described in the beginning of today's presentation. Bear with me, I seem to have a little leg time from when I click to when the slide turns, so. Okay, so the first one that we wanna talk about today is the Stanford model, which is known as the Chronic Disease Self-Management Program. Uh, you might have also heard it referred to as CDSMP. And the name for this program varies by state, as you can see on your slides here. In South Dakota, the Stanford Chronic Disease Self-Management Program is known as Better Choices, Better Health. In Kansas, it is this Kansas Self-Management Education. And this is a non-disease specific program. It's open to individuals with any type of a chronic condition, as well as their caregivers, um, their partners or spouses, and their family members. So all are welcome to participate. This is a six-week workshop. Uh, participants and family members meet with the leaders two and a half hours weekly, and the program is delivered in a group setting. And during these sessions, participants will um, learn about tools for daily living. Uh, they talk about problem solving, empowerment for the patient and the caregivers. And one of the nice things about this program is it is highly um, gauged on participation. Um, there's a lot of emphasis on mutual support and success to build the participant's confidence and the caregiver's confidence in the day-to-day -day management of their chronic condition. And um, one of the things that we wanted to make sure that we emphasize today is this program is not intended to conflict with any existing programs or treatments. It's really intended to enhance regular treatment and be a complementary program to existing practices. Uh, this program is lay leader led, and it's quite common for the leaders that are facilitating these workshops to have a chronic condition themselves and it is not intended to replace the diabetes self-management education that follows the national standards. Um, those would be the programs that are typically accredited or recognized by ADA or AADE. We'll talk about a little bit more about that in another couple slides here. Um, so the program that I just got done sharing with you is the non-disease specific program of which people with diabetes or their caregivers are welcome to attend. Um, but there is also a diabetes self-management program um, known as DSMP, if you were to look at it on the Stanford website. And in South Dakota, that program is called Better Choices, Better Health with Diabetes. And the difference in this Stanford model, as opposed to the one that I just explained previously, is this model is specific to diabetes. So it's open to individuals who have prediabetes or diabetes, uh, and again, their caregivers, spouses, partners, and family as well. This, too, is a workshop that meets weekly for six weeks. Uh, the sessions are two and a half hours long each, and this, too, is held in a group setting. And similar to the other model, 
the tools that are discussed are for daily living, problem solving, and patient caregiver empowerment. Again, the focus of those discussions would be diabetes specific with this particular uh, model as opposed to the one that was non-disease specific. Um, again, participation is highly encouraged uh, to foster that mutual support and success that builds the participant's confidence in managing their condition daily. This one, too, is um, intended not to conflict with existing programs or treatment. Again, it's intended to be a complementary piece. Uh, this model, as well, is lay leader-led and, again, is not intended to replace DSME. Um, so with that, let's, let's talk about DSME a little bit. When we talk about the diabetes self-management education slash training, uh, we're talking about the model that is um, recognized or accredited, accredited typically by ADA or AADE and is the model that follows the national standards. As many of you probably know, that program is open to, to patients who have type 1 diabetes or type 2. Um, in some areas, they, the program may also see women who have diabetes in pregnancy. Uh, in other areas, some DSME programs have a separate um, program or um, curriculum for diabetes and pregnancy that appears to be just kind of a case-by-case -case basis. So when we're talking about DSME slash T, and I guess I should say that the slash training comes in um, because that is uh, the term that CMS uses. So um, if there's any question there, that's what the slash T is for. Um, typically, DSME slash T uh, consists of approximately three sessions. The hours per session may vary. It can be delivered in a one-to-one -one or group setting. And one of the other differences with this program as opposed to the two Stanford models that I described previously is DSME slash T is healthcare professional led. So part of the accreditation or recognition requirements for becoming um, a recognized or accredited program is that the program is delivered by a healthcare professional who's typically either a registered nurse, a registered dietitian, or a pharmacist. There is also an option for a board certification in advanced diabetes management. This program, too, um, caregivers are welcome to attend and they're encouraged to attend along with the individual who has diabetes. And focus areas of this program include discussions on healthy eating, physical activity, blood glucose monitoring, medication management, risk reduction, and healthy coping. Um, now, in this program, medical information is discussed. There's education provided around glucose checks, insulin administration, et cetera. And that is not a feature that you would find in the Stanford models, um, which kind of goes into why the Stanford models and DSME slash T can be complementary to one another because they do provide uh, the participants with, with different things. So I, I know that's a lot of, of, of terms and acronyms. So what you see on your screen now here is a program comparison. Obviously, this doesn't provide the all of the details around each one of these programs, but it's just intended to give you a high-level overview of what each program does or does not cover and kind of demonstrate how um, they can work in complement to one another and synergistically, uh, and one really doesn't take the place of the other. Okay, so now let's move on to a couple scenarios here and then we'll pause and open it up for questions before we move on to the next section of the presentation. So what if my patient has type 1 or type 2 diabetes? Um, now these scenarios are specific to South Dakota because that's where I'm presenting from. So these are the programs that I am most familiar with. Um, if you have, if you're somewhere outside of South Dakota in, you know, Kansas or North Dakota, and you have questions, you're welcome to ask after this part of the presentation. I will answer them as best that I can. And if there's a question that I'm not able to fully answer, um, I will ask that Denise or someone else chime in as well. So 
Um, with that, let's kind of talk through if your patient has type 1 or type 2 diabetes, what program options that we've discussed today are available to them. And um, really, as you can see on your, your screen here, they have a number of options. They can start. Um, I, you don't have to go in any order, but the way we have it presented here is they could start with diabetes self-management education. Um, that's going to give them the uh, information around medical management. And again, that's typically three sessions. But um, as you might find with the patients that you're counseling, they may not feel fully comfortable in managing their condition on a day-to-day -day basis after the series of DSME sessions. So. Um, having the availability of these Stanford models is really a great opportunity to provide that ongoing support. Uh, and we know when we look at the National Standards for Diabetes Self-Management Education, um, you, some of you may know that the new standards for 2017 were recently released. And Standard 8 is around ongoing support and really does um, make the case for the need for um, support and resources beyond that initial diabetes self-management education. So. Um, again, these programs that are listed here could be switched in order if, if that was necessary for some reason, but what we want to get at here is just if your patient has type 1 or type 2 diabetes, um, there are quite a few options available to them that would provide them with ongoing support beyond um, those initial DSME sessions. Now, we haven't really touched on prediabetes a lot in this presentation. Um, there's a number of options available to patients with prediabetes as well. The two that you see on your screen here are both of the Stanford models, the Better Choices, Better Health with Diabetes, and then the non-disease specific. The other one that I want to mention is the National Diabetes Prevention Program, which is uh, for patients with prediabetes to help them prevent type 2 diabetes. And if you want more information about that program, you're welcome to contact me as well. Okay, so I want to pause there, and um, I think we're going to open it up for questions. Uh, again, I know we, we tossed around a lot of terms and, and went pretty quickly over a number of programs. So let me pause and ask, does anyone have any questions before we continue? I just want to remind our participants that you can enter your questions in the chat box. And you can also press star 5 on your keypad to notify the moderator and put you in the question queue. If you are in the question queue, you'll be prompted by the moderator and you'll hear an announcement of line unmuted when it's your turn to ask a question. I can just start quickly. This is Denise, and uh, one comment came through the chat box that I just want to address, and it was um, about the programs in Nebraska. And um, in Nebraska, there is also Stanford's Chronic Disease Self-Management Program and, their and the Stanford's Diabetes Self-Management Program called Living Well and Living Well with Diabetes. Um, we, did, we were remiss, I guess, in adding that onto the slide, but we haven't worked actively as a Quinn with them, but we certainly um, are wanting to promote those programs in Nebraska as well. So in Nebraska, um, you also have the Stanford model available to you. There aren't any additional questions or comments in the chat box. Carrie, are there any questions in the queue? Not as of yet. Remember, if you do want to ask a question, just press star 5, and I can unmute your line to give you the opportunity to ask your question. I'm seeing no questions. Clean, if you want to begin your portion of the presentation, please begin. Hi, my name is Colleen Swanson. I'm the program coordinator and certified diabetes educator at Avera Medical Group in Pierre, and we have an American Diabetes Association recognized program, a DSME program, and we've been lucky enough to work with the Better Choices, Better Health with Diabetes program 
in collaboration. So my objective today is just to go through how my program may complement another program um, and specifically the Better Choices, Better Health program. So just um, to go over first the benefits, um, so this is a, a slide deck we got from CMS. So they term their um, verbiage as DSMT, but it's the same thing, diabetes self-management education, just a different term. So the benefits of having a diabetes self-management education is what the first thing I want to go through with you. And it just shows, the research has shown that it decreases patients' A1Cs, um, in, increases or improves medication adherence, and then it does overall lower the healthcare costs um, in general with those patients. Unfortunately, the statistic is low on the patients that are actually um, enrolled in a DSME program. It's only about 55% by the CDC, um, so hoping to improve that. Um, the reimbursement is another thing that is also a, a, often a question that people have when they're either starting a new program. Um, so this is just some um, general guidelines. Most insurance companies follow Medicare's model, so that's why we're showing you Medicare's model here. Someone that's um, diagnosed with diabetes is going to be someone more apt to get the insurance or the reimbursement. The pre-diabetes portion um, is, is difficult with reimbursement at this time and hopefully will be improving. Um, but typically with a newly diagnosed um, type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes, you will get 10 hours of education annually that should be covered with your insurance. And, and like I said, this um, commercial insurance typically follows the Medicare plan with that. And this, you know, insurance, every insurance is different, so I always encourage patients to check with their insurance company. Um, so the patients that would get the 10 hours would be a patient that is new to Medicare, someone newly diagnosed, or someone that has not been through a DSME education program. Um, and then after that, typically they cover two hours annually after that first initial year. So this is just a nice um, picture showing you that there is some value as far as getting reimbursement. Um, and there's revenue there for your clinics or uh, organizations. Typically the class setting is preferred by insurance companies. And if you aren't having a class, they want to know why is this patient being seen individually. Um, so that, that is another thing to note. So this is just showing if you have a new DSME or DSMT program, how do I start billing to CMS? What do I do? Um, so first you need to become accredited with the AADE or the ADA and become recognized to bill to Medicare and then you'll send a, your certificate to CMS to set up billing for that. Um, and this can be through rural health care or through clinics or organizations. So this is just that whole picture. Um, and it will be available after the presentation if you guys want it. Um, I think it's a, it's a nice overall uh, illustration of the DSME reimbursement and pathway to get it. So some challenges that I have found with DSME, or my program specifically, is cost. So we touched a little bit on that. And with insurance plans changing every year, um, some people might have higher deductibles or maybe the insurance isn't willing to pay as many hours. So that's why I always encourage patients to check with their insurance before coming or in our letter we send out, we say that. Um, and then the prediabetes portion as well um, isn't well covered. So the diagnosis of diabetes is actually preferred for most insurance. Um, one other challenge we have is just in South Dakota is where I can speak to. Um, we have a lot of rural areas that don't have great access to any kind of diabetes support or diabetes education. Um, so that can be difficult. You know, I, I find my program, we try to catch patients that live out of town with their primary care appointments for that reason. Um, and, and sometimes just the challenge of work schedules and cost and distance, sometimes the follow-up um, is difficult. So that's one thing, too. 
Um, Pre-diabetes is another thing um, that isn't well covered and typically want to cover with your insurance. Um, some, there are some programs out there that unfortunately I don't have, but um, with pre-diabetes that can be helpful. So um, one thing that I've found working together with Better Choices, Better Health is that patients have had great satisfaction with it. Um, some good candidates that I use from my program are people that have completed our program, you know, they have completed our full class series or completed our individual sessions, um, and they, they would benefit from further accountability, further, further motivation, and this just kind of helps with that as well. And then also those patients that, you know, maybe we saw for a one-time quick visit with prediabetes um, wasn't well covered by their insurance, this would be um, a great program, the Better Choices, Better Health with Diabetes is a great program for these patients that have issues with cost. Um, so um, we have had some difficulties sometimes with patients coming back for that annual. So we usually get them for that first initial year, that 10 hours of education or, or less. And then sometimes after that, they kind of feel like, oh, I'm done. I've had my education. But there really needs to be more of a we, it's ongoing support, ongoing education. So sometimes um, following up with a Better Choices, Better Health workshop has been really helpful just for them to get further support. Um, I, don't, I don't feel like um, it's a competition when I'm referring patients to Better Choices, Better Health. Um, it's, it's really just helping to motivate patients. And you know, just um, learning in general and changing in lifestyles can be really difficult. So um, having that further reinforcement can be really helpful for patients to maybe they maybe they heard it the first time but they didn't change any lifestyle. So just that further reinforcement really helps to uh, get those things that we, we were trying to teach initially through to them and give them that support as well. Um, one of our DSME measures that we need to do is we, we track data, we track a clinical um, goal, which we track A1C or a behavior change goal. And then another thing we need to do is a support plan, a diabetes support plan. And one of those things, for example, would be a patient going to see their provider or a patient going to the foot doctor or endocrinologist. But another great one we've used is the Better Choices, Better Health workshop. And that goes really well with our diabetes support plan just to help patients get further support after our education is complete. So I had some patients that I talked to after the workshop, Better Choices, Better Health with Diabetes, and they did, there's a few things that they really enjoyed about it. Um, they said they liked working in a group setting and making group goals. They enjoyed having a textbook that they could take home and read at home. Um, and then they did say, and one patient did say, some of the information was a review, but it was good for them to get that review and they learned some new tips as well. Um, another thing someone said is that it was people from all walks of life, so it was kind of encouraging for them for that, and that the instructors were very good at teaching the class. So I've had some, some really, really, really good um, patient satisfaction, and I think that goes a long way um, for patients for lifestyle changes. So I will pass it over to Denise, and she will finish presentation. Thank you so much, Colleen, for that information, and also Melissa, too, for describing the program. I'm going to just uh, finish off here by talking about some opportunities, then, that, that we can have, or we will present to you for partnering with us, for partnering with the Quality Innovation Network, and um, being able to present these programs and and improve outcomes for the patients with diabetes in our region. So um, I am a workshop leader, and I have facilitated, had the opportunity to be trained and facilitated workshops. So I just want to touch on a few um, observations and reinforce a little bit what Colleen said. Um, first of all, the reinforcement of the diabetes um, management training. Um, it's important to know that as a in this in this setting and as a leader, we do not. Um, give any medical information at all during these trainings or during these workshops, I should say. Um, even though I am a nurse 
um, have been trained to this curriculum, and um, again, it isn't normally or particularly always led by health professionals, but I do not give any information that is medical-based. So if those questions do come up, and they, they do come up quite often, um, they may ask, you know, um, something about their insulin dosage, or they're talking among themselves, and so, you know, why is you know, John next to me, why is his dosage different than mine and all of those types of things. And so they'll, they'll try to get some of those answers, but this is really an opportunity for, for us as workshop leaders to refer them back to their provider or back to their diabetes educator or back to their dietitian if it's a question about their diet. Um, so it really is more just that dealing with the day-to-day -day symptoms that can impact their diabetes management, such as fatigue, um, pain, stress, some of the emotional problems such as um, depression or anger or fear that they might be dealing with or frustration. Um, there's a lot of good conversation about some of the frustrations that come along with, with having diabetes. Um, so this, again, just reinforces a lot of what they've learned and being able to implement that um, in healthy ways. Um, it also helps them to, to form habits, and Colleen talked a little bit about that. They get the information, but they haven't had a chance to apply it, or they don't know how to begin to apply some of that information. So part of the workshop really is based on um, every every week we do action planning, and so they, they decide on what they're going to work on for the week, and it's really um, stressed that it's something that they want to work on, not something that their doctor maybe told them to do or their, their wife or husband told them to do or, or a child told them to do. Um, we really break it down so that they become successful and they find goals that they can work on and that they can achieve. And ultimately, when they start achieving those goals, those weekly goals, um, they gain a lot of self-confidence and then they form habits. And um, you know, there's a lot of research out there on habit forming, and some say, you know, kind of the general uh, consensus is anywhere between 21 days and two months to form a habit. So um, it's just a process. And once they've gone through six weeks of really working on some of these um, goals that they've, that they've uh, set for themselves, they do find that they become a habit and that they're more self-confident and self-confident. And I... I can remember some of the um, some of the responses I get from participants, like just you know when we talk about managing diet in situations like a, a Sunday potluck or things like that, they just say this is just too hard. Or cooking, this is really hard to try to cook this way all the time, and they feel defeated sometimes. But then there's people in the workshop that come up with new ideas, and I. I like to always refer to one of our participants in peer that people I think were just in awe of because he, he's made a big turnaround in his life and has lost a remarkable amount of weight and his A1Cs are, have improved significantly and he's so much healthier and just feels better. But he talks about the different, he's got like eight different flavors of Mrs. Dash and he talks about how you can, you can change up a lot of the same recipes and just make them taste different. But making different spices, and, and so they share some of those different things um, amongst each other, and that's where that mutual support comes up, um, comes into play, and the problem-solving, um, there's a problem-solving process that's within the curriculum that we use that's really great, that when somebody has a problem, they put it, we put it up on the board, and we go through this process, and they come away with one or two suggestions, or maybe even more, that they can try for problem solving and um, a process for going through those different types of suggestions that, they, that they're given and how to come up with something that might work for them. Um, and then the resources. I know Colleen mentioned that one of the participants said they liked the book and it is it's Living, oh, I, didn't, I don't have the why on there, it's Living a Healthy Life with Chronic Conditions. Um, it's really a great overall book um, that talks um, just about healthy lifestyle choices, and um, it's the book that's used in both the Chronic Disease Self-Management Program, and this is Better Choices, Better Health, um, or the Stanford model, I should say, um, but it's used in both the diabetes. And then there's, we also offer a relaxation tape with the Better Choices, Better Health, because we do find that having a chronic condition such as diabetes is um, very stressful, and so 
participants who've never tried anything like that before, they get the opportunity to try some relaxation tapes and see that see if it's, it's something that's helpful for them. And again, sometimes that takes a while. We always tell them to try it at least twice because uh, sometimes the first time it's hard to to do that or to understand how it might work for them. But after they've tried it a couple times, it's just interesting to hear people and participants say that they have found it helpful. So opportunities for program synergy. So how can you work with us? How can we help you to implement um, a program like the Stanford model or the DEEP model along with the diabetes education that you might deliver in an accredited or recognized situation or according to those national standards? So the first one is the bi-directional referrals. So we can work together to, um, to implement a process for referrals both ways. So if you have patients that you think would benefit from this, then um, you refer them to the workshop. But oftentimes we get people from the community who come in because we were promoting it um, through different sources of newspaper or radio or flyers in different areas. And so sometimes we get participants who have never had diabetes education and haven't considered that. And as we talk about the different topics within the class, we come to help them recognize the benefits of having some diabetes education. So um, we refer back and forth both ways. Um, other ways that, you, that we can work together is through if your site is um, available to host workshops. And they have, like at Colleen's site there in Pier, um, they have a room for us to do that. So we're right on site there at Avera and we offer the workshops there or if there's um, other sites within the town that help, help uh, or that might be helpful or useful for a workshop. The other is workshop site suggestions. So this is a, a place such as um, if you are in a remote area and or if you're in an area you don't offer diabetes education, then this could be something that we could at least offer that um, your patients may be able to to go to. And oftentimes if they're you know hundreds of miles away from being able to get to a site where there's diabetes education, this is also an opportunity for them to um, be able to feel more uh, confident in, in the way that they manage their diabetes. And then workshop leaders, we're always looking for workshop leaders too, so if you have suggestions for workshop leaders, we can work together to find leaders within um, a community or a geographic area where we need to, um, or where, we, where you would like to offer some of these workshops. And then part of the technical assistance that we can provide is helping you to develop a process or a workflow for identifying patients that might benefit from um, more of the community-based diabetes education, um, the Stanford as a deep model. So we have worked with uh, clinics and with um, providers so that they can understand and develop a simple way um, because it's always hard. There's always they're busy, and when they think of one more thing to do, of helping to find out who might benefit from this, um, we can help in understanding um, their, their clinic workflow and how we can work best to help them to identify that. Um, it also, it always is helpful to identify a champion, so somebody who really believes in the program, so um, we can help you to understand that process, and then we just will give ongoing technical support as you need it um, as we work on promoting these. And then a couple of sites like in Peer, what we're working on is, uh, is a quarterly workshop. So that is scheduled so we know and so the diabetes educators know or the providers know when they're talking with the patient, okay, now the next workshop will be starting up in January um, and that is already scheduled and on a, on a regular routine so that um, it makes it easy for those that are working with the patients to be able to refer them to those, to those workshops. All right, so next step, um, where do we go from here? Some opportunities here for you. If you want to schedule a one-to-one -one meeting to discuss some of the topics in detail, we have our contact information, Melissa and I, um, on, the, on the final slide. Um, I guess it's the second to the final slide. And we are more than happy to sit down with you and help you to understand how we can work together. Um, if you want to schedule a presentation with any of, um, if you want us to talk to your providers, we do that as well so that they can have a better understanding of what this program is about, um, we can help you set that up as well.
If you want to learn more about Better Choices, Better Health, or Better Choices, um, Better Health with Diabetes, or the DEEP model, um, or any of the Stanford models, just go ahead and contact me. We have representatives in all of our states that would be happy to visit with you more about that. And if you want more information about DSME or learning about starting a program in your state, you can contact Melissa. And if it's not in South Dakota, she'll get you in contact with whoever it is in your state that would be um, most appropriate for that. So on the next slide, there is um, Melissa and my contact for that. So feel free to reach out to either one of us. And then the final slide is just some resources. Um, I don't, okay. The deep resource didn't get on there. I sent that and maybe that didn't uh, make it. So I will go ahead and make sure that everybody has the resource for deep. Um, but the, the Good and Healthy South Dakota, that's the Better Choices, Better Health uh, site. There is the national standards for DSME there. Those are the new standards. Um, and the Stanford Model Self-Management Resource Center is where they are. So that final slide didn't get up. Dated, um, I will make sure that we get those resources out to you um, because I, um, I really think that national standards for DSME, that wasn't the latest link, and for the DEEP model, um, there is uh, a resource there too as well. So with that, um, would you, we'll open up to questions. I see there's a few questions here on the, the, uh, the chat, so that is one of them is sending the copy of the PowerPoint, and maybe Stacy, you can address that. Yes, uh, there will be some handouts, and the PowerPoint will be available on the website at greatplainsquin.org, and all of you who registered will receive an email with that information. Also, I believe the handouts are available on your registration page when you um, access the system initially. So if you want to go back to that link, they should be available there as well. All right. And one of the questions here is um, asking about the two and a half hour meeting session as a deterrent. Um, I will have to say that um, it is, I haven't found it as being a deterrent. We've not lost any participants who have signed up for their workshop because of the two and a half hours. Um, it may, I guess, be a deterrent for those that are signing up, and they may choose not to sign up, I guess, because of the two and a half hours. But um, definitely, once they get started, I we really have found that everybody comes to every session, and they stay for the duration of the session. And I think Lisa had a question, up, or Lisa had a. Uh, yeah, for the deep sessions, um, the, they are generally two hours and not two and a half hours each for six weeks. I just want to add as a reminder that you can submit your questions in the chat box, or you may also press star five to notify the moderator to put you in the question queue. Just want to add to that the handouts that were made available included the um, DSME slash T document that was presented earlier about the reimbursement and the benefits of that program, as well as um, the presentation. And what was the there was one more um, document that is from CMS that talks and compares a little bit about differences between what the Stanford and the DEEP models are compared to the, um, the DSM-E training. Um, so it's a little, kind of a similar overview that Melissa presented on one of her slides. And again, we understand there's a lot of confusion sometimes from all of the verbiage and the wording and the different um, programs that are offered in the different states. So we really encourage you, if you have questions, to reach out to us. Um, 
if you have, you know, help you gain a better understanding of what's available to you there and how we can um, work with you. Carrie, were there any additional questions in the queue? I believe there's one. I'm just trying to unmute their line. I believe it comes from Willow City, North Dakota. Hi, this is Lisa in North Dakota, and I work for Quality Health Associates in North Dakota. I am an RN and a CDE, um, and the place that I worked before I joined QHA at our hospital, we had both. We had the DSME, so we were accredited, and I'm happy to say that we added the DEEP program to our, our organization, so we did both. And I can really speak to the complementary aspect of the program. Um, some of you have heard my story before. I felt like we really marketed our DSME program. And then when we started doing DEEP and we notified our patients that these classes were available, the call, the phone just started ringing and the calls kept coming in, and we just had a really good response. And once you start teaching people how they should be taking care of themselves, that they should be coming in for their follow-ups, they should be doing, you know, this follow-up lab periodically, um, and, and certain other uh, tests should be done annually and so forth. They really learn a lot, and they always say they wish they had done the education sooner. So um, I would really encourage everybody, if you have an opportunity to participate either in the DEEP program or the Stanford model, we really found it to be complimentary, and I'm really happy to work on it from the other side now. So. Um, good luck, and I, I hope everybody takes advantage of the opportunity to participate in these programs. We'll just give another minute. Again, you can use the chat box, or you can press star 5. I did put up... Uh, Denise's and Melissa's contact information for your convenience. We just want to thank each of today's speakers for sharing their experience and insight. And we also want to remind you that the Great Plains Quinn website has additional information as well as a variety of tools and resources. We provide updates and notifications to Learning and Action Network members, and we encourage you to register online. Seeing no additional questions, I think we will um, wrap up. We do appreciate and value everyone's time and participation, so please take a final moment to complete the webinar evaluation upon exiting the system. Thank you, everyone, and enjoy your day.